Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Clutch Talk podcast slash YouTube slash We Do It All. As always, I am your host, John. Very happy to be here. My boy over here in the six. What's going on, Jay Hill? What's good? What's good? Excited to talk about these wolves. Another day, another dollar. Let's get it. Oh, another day, another dollar. Hey, my brother over there in La La Land. What's going on, Junior? Yo, man, I'm excited to be on here to talk about the wolves. Uh, we got to see how my man Wesley's adapting to having Patrick Beverly on his team. Uh, we're going to see for how long, but uh, but I'm excited to talk about this one. So let's get into it. Man, let's 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 jump straight into it. But Junior, you man, you said it. You said it best. You know, we got we got Wesley here on the pod today. Uh Wesley, man, we are really excited to have you on. Wesley's a big, a big Wolves fan. So yeah, appreciate it. honestly, Wesley, uh, you want to introduce yourself to the fans a little bit, you know, talk a little bit about yourself and how you know you came uh came across being a Wolves fan. <laughs> sure. So uh my name is Wes. I'm a kid from Long Island. Um I fell into the Wolves kind of I only got into basketball maybe around when Tim Duncan retired um, and became a fan once Jimmy Butler was traded there, I kind of hopped on the bandwagon and from there fell in love with watching cat play. And I kind of been there ever since. Okay. Okay. So, so, so you, you've been a, been a Wolves fan ever since, uh, ever since cat cat went over there. It's supposed to change the franchise, but uh, not, it hasn't happened yet. Huh? Uh I mean, <laughs> this is stressful. <laughs> you just wait patiently. It'll it'll come eventually. It'll come eventually, and and, and we, we got a lot to get into, man. So Wesley, we just want to thank you for uh for for coming on the pod, and we'll we'll definitely get into that. Just real quick before we do get started, I just want to let all the fans know that that Wesley is an associate editor at the at the last word last word hoops. Uh, so you guys can go ahead and you guys can go ahead and give him a give him a follow on Twitter, man. It's at last word hoops. So for everyone that's watching on YouTube, sure. I'll just go ahead and uh, put it right there. in Wesley's little bubble, man, go give him a follow. Go check out some of Wesley's uh, articles that they put over there, man, because just like Clutch Talk, they love basketball, man. They talk. They got some great hoop content, man. So let's get into that, man. So you guys ready to talk about this Wolves today? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. All right, Wesley. So the first question we ask all fans for these fan interviews is, Wesley, as a Timberwolves fan, are you content with the way the year went? Uh, no. <laughs> In no <laughs> way. Um, it's a no BS, just straight to no. No, nah, it's <laughs> like, I mean, first off, Cat was went through a bunch of trouble this year, like his mom passed. So, like, this year we all knew going into it was going to be um, – kind of a wash for him. We're lucky he even played. Um, but we also dealt with D'Lo getting injured. Um, he went through knee surgery. Uh, Malik Beasley got suspended. And we never really got to see the team together until the end of the year. So, and that was what? Maybe at most 20 games where we got to see all the guys play together. So we're kind of, and we, you know, changed from Ryan Saunders to Chris Finch mid-year. So this year was kind of a toss-up. Uh, we're just, I'm just happy to be moving into the season. <laughs> I, I, I feel that, man. You know, I even have here on my notes, Wesley, I have, you guys went 23 and 49. You can't be happy. There's, there's just no way that, you know, no. you are, you are happy with, with the way that the, the season went. But, you know, Wesley, one thing that you, you, you touched on was, you know, you talked about the, uh, the um, game suspensions that Malik Beasley had to face. You talk about uh, multiple games that, you know, Cat missed and, and D'Angelo Russell missed and due to injuries and COVID it was already such a, s- such a crazy year. But, but Wesley, I have to ask you this question: Like, what what is the one reason that you would pinpoint to to the Wolves really not being really not finding any success, man? Because let, if we really look at it, the Wolves roster it's a decent roster, man. With Carl Anthony Towns, you know, mm-hmm. one of the most uh, uh, versatile bigs in the league, really, in my opinion, might be one of the best bigs in the league when he really brings it. D'Angelo Russell, um, I know, you know, he's very injury prone. Uh, goes. Uh, a lot of off court issues, but when he's on the court and when he's there, he can really produce. So like, you know, that, that duo, that's not 23 and 49, man. So to you, Wesley, you know, is it upper management? Is it players? Is it egos? Is it coach? What to you, what would be one thing that you would pinpoint as to why, you know, you guys have been struggling so much over there in Minnesota? Oh, shit. It's t- the issues are top to bottom. I mean, we got to, we're going through an ownership change right now. That was a debacle. Uh, head coach me is just continuity. Like 
even uh, through the coach change mid-year, you can see that the team basically changed the way they played on offense, the change in defensive philosophy throughout the season. So it was they really could never find a groove doing anything. Yeah, man. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it was tough to even get, get a rhythm going this year. But uh, Junior and Jay Hill, man, uh, how, how, do you, how do you guys feel you know, about, the, about this, uh, this Wolf season? I don't know if you guys briefly want to answer whether it, it went the way you expected and what, you know, what's one thing that you, you would pinpoint to the fall of them going, you know, 23 and 49? I don't know if I can pinpoint an exact fault, right? I, I don't obviously don't know the, the Wolves as well as Wesley does. But one thing that always struck to me is their roster on paper is better than what they're outputting. And this is what I talked to you a lot, John, about the Suns a couple of years ago. I said, how are they consistently bad? They have Devin Booker. They have DeAndre Ayton. I get that those guys aren't going to you know, necessarily go and, and, and save the day, but they're very good players. And, and I, it looked like, you know, they just needed some veteran leadership, like what we saw in CP3 this year that helped their run. But ultimately, I, I feel the same way with the, with the Wolves. I do feel that they have the pieces to maybe not. I'm not saying they're going to go out and compete for a title if they add, you know, one more player. But I think that they they can, you know, be getting more than 23 wins. They could be there fighting for an eight seed. And, and so I think ultimately it comes back to management. It comes back to coaching. Now, like Wes said, with the change in ownership group, that's a big change throughout that. That's, that's got ripple effects that the entire organization feels. So we're going to have to see what happens with that. But I think once they find their stability with management and stability with coaching, it's going to help. I think things will just ha- kind of have a domino effect and start falling more into place for the Wolves. And get rid of Patrick Beverly. Yeah, there is there is a lot of uh, turnover on the roster um, this year, especially you know, just with rookies and 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 players leaving, coaching changes, and you, and you really can't predict that uh, going into the season. But there is no real clear direction. Uh, if they were going to be a contending team, then be a con- contending team. If you're going to be in a rebuild, then be in a rebuild. I mean, there's no, as we've seen with many teams, there's no real in between and I think that's kind of where the Wolves have been and that's where they've been ever since you know Jimmy Butler uh, uh, left Um, so it's kind of what we've seen from those you know small market teams it's it's a similar theme uh, with with the Wolves and I really want to see you know Cat take that step I mean all these all the talks are about him being you know top three you know, top two big in the league. So if he's going to be that, he has to be a leader. But we saw what I saw at least last year was Anthony Edwards came in and he kind of took over that alpha role. And it, it seemed like I really saw, you know, cat defer. So if that's going to be the case, then, then if, if uh, Edwards wants to be the number one option, then they have to, they have to be, you know, fine with that role and everyone's, you know, got to fall in line after that. So pick a direction, you know, if you're going to contend, contend. If you're going to be rebuilding, then rebuild. No in between. Yeah, man, it's it, it's it's tough, man. The, the the wolves don't really want to get caught into that no man's island, you know, in that in between. But you know, Wes, I I I have to ask you, you know, I, well, first of all, we want to apologize. You know, Wi-Fi, <laughs> Wi-Fi is tough with the connection. You know, Zoom, Zoom makes it hard for for us to get 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 these interviews uh, yeah, done here. Sure, but uh, but it just um, but we so we appreciate you working through us here, Wes. But you know, one thing that you it seemed like you were saying, you know, when Junior mentioned about getting rid of Patrick Beverly, you you were like, I don't know about that. So let's talk about that most recent trade. Do how do you feel about that Patrick Beverly trade? You know, that I've I've heard ups and I've heard downs. But how does Wesley feel about him? I just put an article about the, I put an article out on Tuesday where I think this is actually like a pretty solid trade for us. Um. We got rid of Culver, who was a sixth pick. I mean, we kind of knew that Culver wasn't going to be nothing uh, this year. He was struggling to get minutes. Um, and even when he was in, he couldn't shoot. Uh, and he couldn't really create for himself. He couldn't others. Like, that pick was a wash. Um, plus, we were Wancho. Um, he's getting paid like $6 million a year for the minutes he was playing for the bigger gang, the lack of defense. Um, 
it wasn't he was pretty much overpaid for us. So being able to get off of both those guys who are we can call them negative value contracts. When I look at this trade, I you know, I look at it as Pat Beverly's a specialist, right? Especially as, as a, a player that you bring onto a championship team, especially as a player you bring that onto a team that's one piece away. Not the Wolves that, that aren't even in the in the playoffs, right? So to me, when I when I look at the trade, all I see is the Wolves trading away a, a young Jared uh, Jer- Culver, which you know you said that you know you guys don't think that he was he was to pan out, but the thing is that he was young, right? Like you guys traded him for a expiring contract, thirty three year old Patrick Beverly, who I don't think takes you guys to that playoff piece. Yeah. You know? So I, 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 I personally don't like, the, don't, don't feel the trade, but I mean, I, I, I definitely understand your point of, you know, getting rid of, uh, get, getting rid of, of Culver and, and, the uh, and you guys, you know, then didn't, didn't see the potential in a man, but Jay Hill and Jr. How do you guys feel about this Patrick Beverly trade? Do the Wolves win or lose on this? I, I think they're certainly winning. Uh, you, you, anytime you bring in, you know, a competitor, a leader, a dog mentality, a player like Pat Beverly. I mean, that's a win for it, for any organization getting him. And I think that's just going to rub off on, you know, Anthony Edwards, who has had some, you know, question, question of, you know, his character on the court, most, most notably, like what I'm talking about, you know, taking plays off. And, and I don't think that's going to fly with a leader uh, like Pat Beverly and and with D'Angelo Russell as well. Exactly. Um, and hopefully they can, you know, spread their their knowledge or sorry, hopefully he can spread his knowledge to them defensively and be kind of their catalyst to, to help them improve. So and I think it cat as well. So you look along down the line, Malik Beasley as well. So just them instilling that attitude, that swagger that Pat Beverly brings to any organization, any team he's been on. I think that's a win. For, for the Wolves. So how do you feel about that, Junior? Man, that's a great point, honestly. Like, and if you think about it, what was the reason that Jimmy Butler was so pissed off a couple years ago? It's because he felt like guys weren't hustling. You know what I mean? So that's that's a good point. I didn't even think about it from that side. If you have somebody like Pat Bev was going to institute that, you know, that grit, ironically, you know, he got traded to Memphis, the whole grit and grind era, though. <laughs> like, if he institutes that mentality, I think it's going to help everybody. It's going to help spe- especially players like D'Lo and, and Anthony Edwards, because like you said... They have had their work ethic questioned before. So so I do think that that's a good addition for sure. Yeah, definitely, man. And, uh, Wesley, you know, as we, as, as we keep moving forward here, Wesley, I got, I, I got to talk about the elephant in the room over there in Minnesota. There's an elephant in the room, okay? <laughs> Wesley, we know we got Carl Anthony Towns. I think D'Angelo Russell can be part of that big three. Is do you think D'Angelo Russell could be part of the big three? Do you still believe in him? I know off camera, me and Jay Hill, we were talking. He was saying he doesn't believe in D'Lo. He doesn't know if D'Lo could be the guy. So, Wesley, do you believe in D'Lo? We need to get this situation figured out here. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of a D'Lo stand. Uh, I've been... I've been following him since he was in Brooklyn. Like I was a big fan of that Brooklyn team he had where he was an all-star for the first time. Um, and basically Wolves fans were, been, were begging for him ever since. Um, I know people that can get put off by the mid-range shooting, the floaters, sometimes the three C jacks up can look like bad shots. But I mean, he's proved to us that he can make them before. The beginning of the season, he didn't look that good. And then he disappeared for his knee surgery. And then he came back under a new coach, a new offense. And he started looking like Brooklyn D'Lo again. Um, so as a third option behind Ant and Cat, you know, once uh, Ant continues his development, I think D'Lo would be a perfect guy to be leader or at least a, like a, ball, a lead ball handler, um, good clutch shot taker. And even though the defense is suspect, I mean, that's the – we're looking – like a team that's going to be offensively slanted anyway. So, uh, D'Lo, great third option for me. Okay, okay. So, uh, I'm I'm actually surprised you said D'Lo is third option because in my mind, I'm thinking that you know the pecking order goes Cat, D'Lo, and then Ant Man. So, so you so you 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 believe in Anthony Edwards? That's um, your guy. Yeah, yeah. We yeah we fully bought in. We fully bought in. Okay, <laughs> he said we fully bought in. All right. So so. You so Wesley, you believe in the possibility of th- there being a big three someday over there in Minnesota, uh, revolving Cat, D'Lo, and Ant. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, Ant could, if I'm, if the goal for Ant, I think right now we want him to become like a Donovan Mitchell type. Um, and even I, there were short stretches in the season where he was putting up like Donovan Mitchell type numbers. I'm not going to say he's obviously not there yet. Um, he still has a little ways to go on defense. Um, he looks like he can, like you said earlier, uh, Jay Hill said earlier, he can take plays off. Um, but on offense, like it's clearly there. The three point shooting is hit or miss depending on the game. But we see him versus Suns put up 42 and keep up with Cap the whole way. Uh, he is not scared of the moment and like he clearly has fun out there. So I mean, we see him sent you to Watanabe back to the G League. So, <laughs> um, I'm buying all the stock. I'm buying all the stock. Okay, buying all the stock. For for me, I know, and I, obviously, it's a different kind of take on D'Lo. I had a chance to you know watch him for about half a year in, in Golden State, and, and I mean, I, I saw what he did in Brooklyn as well, and I was I was ecstatic, uh, honestly, when we got KD. Sorry, when we got D'Lo in return for KD. Um, just simply off the fact that I wanted to see, you know, what he could do in the backcourt uh, with with Steph, because, I mean, obviously that's a crazy, crazy loaded playmaking and scoring and shooting backcourt. Um, and obviously, I, I don't he didn't end up being a good fit in, in Golden State. And 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 what, part of the reason I think that was, you know, just just the pace at which he, which he plays. And I think for that's kind of been always the knock on him. Like you said, Wes, you're talking about his mid range and and also his shot selection in general. Um, He likes to play a lot of isolation ball, but I think when Delo's at his best is when he's making other players around him better uh, with passing. I think he has, we saw a lot of it in college. We saw it in Brooklyn when, you know, he was with a lot of role players, honestly, I think probably Dinwiddie was probably their second option on that Brooklyn team. Um, And he, he was really, you know, at his best when he was a playmaker and he was only averaging 20 points a game. I think when we see him at his worst is when he's trying to do too much offensively rather than getting other players involved. So that's my only real, real gripe with what um, D'Lo does, but I think he's at best, you know, their third option. And I really, like you saw, we saw those flashes from Anthony Edwards uh, this year, like you're saying, Wes, and I think he can be ultimately the one option uh, when it's all said and done, even with Cat there, because I think he just has that. He he wants it. You can see it. Wh- that that mentality plays with defensively, like you said. He wants to get after it. He has fun on the floor. Um, I remember there was a play. I think if he's, I think he either he stole it or Malik Beasley, and they lobbed it up to them. They were laughing down the floor, you know, high fiving that rah rah energy. And I that's why I ultimately think the mentality. That, that Edwards has can can bring that one option. But D'Lo, I still have my, my question marks about him. But, Junior, how do you feel about D'Lo? I know you saw him in L.A. too as well. So Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think it's funny. We've, we've all had D'Lo on our team here yeah, at some point. Right. <laughs> right. But, but uh, I mean, honestly, it's – we've honestly seen four different D'Lo's. I think that, like, Lakers D'Lo is different than Nets D'Lo, is different than Warriors D'Lo, and it's different than Wolves D'Lo. Uh, I think we could all agree. I think Nets deal is probably the best deal that we've seen, but that was just a different time of his career. You know, I think Jay Hill, both Jay Hill and Wes, I mean, you guys all hit, you know, you nailed all the points really. It's just about to see how he's going to fit. And you see flashes of brilliance here and there, but I think that, you know, at least Wes as a, as a Wolves fan, you you want to see that happen consistently. And I think that that lack of consistency has followed him throughout his whole career, even mm-hmm. in Brooklyn a little bit. It just wasn't as apparent. But I think he's he's had these flashes of brilliance, but never really could just give it to you every night, you know. Um, so yes. I honestly think it's going to be just a matter of having them fit together. And I like like Jay Hill said earlier, having you know more structure, uh, or having a guy like Pat Bev, and then what I said with more structure and management, I think is going to help him be a little more consistent. Absolutely. So. This kind of brings me to our next point. Obviously, you've talked a lot about Anthony Edwards, but but my uh, question for you, Wes, is so so let's flash back a little a little bit further um, to specifically November eighteenth, twenty twenty, and why do I bring up that date? That was the date of the twenty twenty NBA draft. So, knowing what you know now, rookie seasons all played out. Um, we're, we're coming into the to the next, uh, obviously the 2021-22 season. Um, you're, you know, let's, let's say you're you're in the front office for the T Wolves. 
with that number one pick, are you taking Anthony Edwards, knowing what you know now, or who are you selecting with that number one pick? Are you sticking with Edwards? Are you taking Lamelo? What are you doing with that yeah, one pick? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still gonna go Ant. Um, I know even though Lamelo ended up winning Rookie of the Year at what pick number three, um, we already had D'Lo at that point, and thinking of D'Lo and Lamelo doesn't really sound as uh, as well the fit as D'Lo and Ant do, um, unless the plan is to move D'Lo down the road and then just have um, LaMelo and Cat plus whatever else you get back from D'Lo. Um, but I'm bought in on the D'Lo, Ant, Cat trio. Um, maybe if we never move Wiggins and we were, had LaMelo from the – Went for Lamelo from the jump. Maybe Lamelo wigs and Cat looks a little bit different. Um, nah, but from the position they're in, I still take I still take at number one. Sure. So Wes, throughout this pod, you've been telling us, you've been telling us that you're in on the Anthony Edwards stock. You're all bought in. So, so Wes, I have a question for you then. So let's say that let's say the Timberwolves decided to put their organization on the line. They say, you know what, Wes? Here, here you go. You make the calls moving forward, all right? And then the next day, you get a call from 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 Masai Jiri over there in, in, in Toronto, right? He gives you a call. He says, he says, Wes, if I give you Pascal Siakam, will you give me Anthony Edwards and Malik Beasley? Wes, talk to me. How are you feeling about this? Are you trading away the future for a more solidified star right now? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, Malik, uh, he's had his issues, but he's been a great movement shooter. You know, when he's been available, like 20 points on 40 plus percent from three. Um, and Ant looks like a potential number one option. Um, we've only we've seen Pascal succeed most as a, let's say, second or third option. But, um, Giving him the keys didn't, hasn't seen the work for the Raptors lately. Um, I just think the potential with Ant is too great to uh, to take that risk for Pascal right now. Um, if we are talking giving up Ant, I'm going to need at least <laughs> – uh, I'm shooting for Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons? What? Yeah, I what? feel like you guys could get him and keep Ant. <laughs> Look. I know he had like a really bad uh, playoffs, um, but I mean, we all know, we all here know that Ben Simmons is better than Pascal, right? So um, even we don't need Ben to be like an offensive centerpiece at all. You know, in Philly, there's Joel and he can take some offensive load uh, and Ben kind of has to show to the rest, even though they have Tobias or whatever. Um, here with Cat and D'Lo, they can do most of it, and then can kind of chill on offense, but kind of be focused more on defense. I still wouldn't want to give up Ant. In my head, he's borderline untouchable, but we're gonna need some big for me to even consider moving him. Like I'm, I don't even want to give up Jaden McDaniel's for Ben. <laughs> Okay, well, Wes, well, first of all, I, I have to say either you re read my mind or you were looking at my script here because I got it right here in my <laughs> script. You guys have to trade for Ben Simmons because Ben Simmons, I, th I think that that's just a perfect fit for you guys, like not for all the reasons that you mentioned and for the reason that, you know, Ben Simmons, he, he's a great defensive player. You know, that's something you guys need a lot of help on, you know, is that defensive end. And you guys got your guard in in, in Anthony Edwards, in uh in, in, in Anthony Edwards and D'Lo. Uh, you guys got your guard. So you don't need Ben Simmons running the guard. And I, the, I don't know why the Sixers have been just so set on making Ben Simmons like the next Magic Johnson. It's just, it's just not working. It just doesn't work. And I think that the Wolves can – can utilize him at the four at the four position. I think that exactly. that will that that will help tremendously, man. Because we know that he can he can play a, a bit of that Jokic game where he could be in the post, passing out the post, creating out the post, man. So I think that you guys can do that. But I am surprised that you you would be willing to give up uh, Anthony Edwards for him because I think he Ben Simmons willing is a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, okay. Well, Junior and Jay, how do, how do you guys feel? Uh, would you guys, you know, risk the the future in in uh, Anthony Edwards and Malik Malik Beasley for a Pascal Siakam type player, or even a that level type player, a Ben Simmons, you know, or if you guys think of somebody, you know, off the top of your head, feel free to just shout them out. I think the only untouchable player on the Wolves is Carl Anthony Towns, in my opinion. Maybe Anthony Edwards is, oh, definitely Anthony Anthony Edwards is second. But I don't know if I'd go as far as as not including him in any deal. Uh, I think, again, that's only Carl, Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, I mean, untouchable is a weird way to talk about it, right? Like if, if you get offered, you know, like Anthony Davis for Carl Anthony Towns, you would take that. <laughs> but but I guess I guess so maybe not untouchable. But I think most teams can't make a deal for Carl Anthony Towns. A good number of teams cannot make a deal for Anthony Edwards. Um, I think almost any team, with the exception of very few, can make a good deal for D'Angelo Russell, I believe. So I think you could move D'Angelo Russell for the right pieces, and I think D'Angelo Russell should be the centerpiece of a Ben Simmons trade, in my opinion. I know Wes probably disagrees, so tell me, Wes. But but I'm thinking if you could get Ben Simmons, would you not be okay with giving up D'Angelo Russell? Um, I'm leaning towards no, only because okay. the, like, the friendship between D'Lo – and Cat is a big part of how we're trying to keep Cat happy for the near future. Right, right. Um, and bringing in his friend and then trading him away for Ben. I know they're like a solid group of guys. They're all friends. D'Lo has more value to this organization in particular than what he just brings on the court. Okay. That's why yeah. the uh, Rosas was able to give up that protected first rounder for D'Lo in the first place. Um, so I'm honestly, full, I'm leaned into staying packed for now. I think okay. the off season as it's gone is, you know, nothing special, but I think it's. That's solid. And, and, and Jay Hill, how about, how, how about you, man? How do you, how do you feel? Would you, you know, be willing to mortgage the future in the, in the Anthony Edwards for a more solidified star, like a Pascal Siakam type player? No, nah, I'm not ready to do that. And, and and it stems from this. Just simply, Pascal Siakam, you'd bring him in with, with – if you're getting rid of Anthony Edwards and, you know, D'Angelo Russell, that's who you said asking, right? Uh, I, and I think, no, because we've seen at best, you know, Pascal Siakam, Siakam's a number two option. And like I said before, I think that Anthony Edwards will be eventually turned into their number one option. So what you're doing is, you know, bringing in Pascal Siakam to be your number two option or, you know, or number one option. I don't think he'll be a number one option over Cat. But I don't think, especially in the West, if this were East, maybe a different question. If they, if the Raptors and, and the Wolves were to switch conferences, maybe I look at this, it would move the needle enough to make them a contender, a legitimate contender in the East. But in the West, no, I don't think this move – that move would put them as a maybe even a top eight seed. I don't know if it would put them in a, in the playoffs, uh, making a move like that because I just haven't seen enough where I believe Pascal Siakam can make an immediate impact um, at, at that position. So, and and I really like with the the young talent they have there with you know D'Lo, Jalen McDaniel's, Vanderbilt. Uh, instead, I'm I'm waiting, willing to see them grow. So. I think you're in the same position of that. Are you contending or are you rebuilding? Even if you bring in a guy who's won all stars and championships in Pascal Siakam. Yeah, man. That, that. Um, I think one of the more like deep cuts that's going on with like in Timberwolves fandom right now is um, having to choose between like the two timelines we got. So if we call and. Uh, and Jaden McDaniels one timeline and we call Cat and D'Lo another timeline, we have the option to split either way depending on what happens this season. Let's say this season goes poorly and Cat ass out um, and we're forced to move him. We could lean into having Anthony Edwards as our first option for the future. Or if something happens with Anthony Edwards, it had to be considered, but, um, and we want to lean into our current window, we can – trade Anthony Edwards and, you know, build a more championship now team. So, I mean, the options are still open regardless. Um, 
but it's kind of we kind of just have to see what happens this season. Yeah, yeah, that 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 that's honestly a, a, the best way to really be able to describe what's what's going on over there uh, in Minnesota, man. But Wesley, you know, as 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 we start to wrap up here, you know. Um, like how you said, and I we mentioned it throughout the throughout the podcast many times. Uh, this last season just it, it just wasn't meant for you guys, you know, to to, to have success. Uh, whether whether it was D'Lo, Cat, and Malik Beasley all missing twenty five plus games, uh, whether due to injury, whether due to COVID, whether you know whatever it be. So barring all that, let's you know let's forget that. Let's consider everyone is healthy. You got the roster. You, you got the roster. You know, Wesley, where do you see? the Wolves finishing next year. Do you see them in the playoff picture? Not. If so, where? Um, I would probably lean towards the, the plan. Um, the goal for us probably this year is probably be at about 500. Um, I mean, if Anthony Edwards develops faster than we anticipate, then hopefully more. Um, but making the playoffs, even if we have to go through the plan to do it, um, I think would be a good, you know, good season, a good movement forward in my eyes. I don't know what y'all think. Okay. I mean, yeah, if you guys can make the playoffs, I think that's great because last time y'all made the playoffs was 2018. Y'all got swept by the Rockets. So if y'all can make the playoffs, I think that's that that's huge ups. But I I don't know only because it is – the tough West Coast, man. Like you know, like again, like if we were to to to, to throw it in the East Coast, maybe. But it's just in in, in this West Coast, man. It's just so tough. But let, let me see with Junior and Jay Hill. Junior and Jay Hill, you guys, what do you guys think? You guys think the Wolves are finishing in that playoffs? No, I I think I think it's just too early to say to think any other any any otherwise or otherwise that they'll make the playoffs and the playing game. I think that's wishful thinking. Um, obviously, no offense, West. Like I, I think they, I think they have the young pieces there uh, in Minnesota for sure. It's just about development, and I think if they can, uh, if they can, you know, be on the brink, you know, be competitive for most of the season, like Wes said, in in that close to around five hundred, you know, within five or ten games, I think that would be a great season for them and furthering that development. And you want to be competitive to the point where you're you're playing meaningful games, you know, closer to April, uh, in in March, and give you know Cat that sense of hope, just like we saw with Giannis, and we've seen now that you know small market teams can win a championship. So if they build around um, Cat and they show that they can compete and they're moving in the right, trending in the right direction, I think that's what you want from you know the front office perspective uh, to be competitive give cat that sense of hope that they can win there and then he'll um that he'll stay that's it no i mean that's it like i think that i think we could see the wolves fighting for a play-in spot and i think that you know i think that's that's going to be honestly i mean an improvement on last season right and i think it's just that gradual improvement that's what's going to get that's what's going to get you know a like cat to buy in long term and them to just kind of be able to put a consistent run back to back and, you know, maybe attract a, a, a free agent. And then, you know, I think they'll be right there competing in the West. What yeah. I think should have, um, like kind of what the Grizzlies were this year, you know, I'm saying that probably hurts Jay Hill a little bit. Um, <laughs> I felt like, I felt like that should have been us. Like that's what our season should have come out to be and make, you know, make the play in and then oops, you beat the Warriors. And then you end up making the playoffs that way. You have your good game, and it's like, all right, we're hopeful for um, moving forward. Like there, we see that there's something here. So that's that's the, that's kind of what I want to leave. That's what should have happened. I felt last season if everything went right, but that's definitely what I got my eyes on for this upcoming season. Okay, okay. So then, so that actually it transitions us perfectly to the last question that we ask here on on our team interviews. Is this is this Wesley? If you could give us one word or one phrase to describe how you feel about this past season, and then another word or another phrase to describe how you feel this next upcoming 2021-2022 season. Um, first, I mean the first word that comes to mind for last season. Let's call it a wash. Um, we never had the, like I said in the beginning, we never had the continuity for this 
decent to turn out um, well for any team. They show coach change, injuries. No team, no matter how good or bad, is going to perform up to expectations like that. Um, and then for this upcoming season, you could use the word hope. You could use, and I would probably look to the word development. Um, you know, we have sometimes people forget that Cat and D'Lo can summer league roster, maybe becoming more of an on-ball creator. Um, Anthony Edwards, even though moving off his great rookie season, maybe help them more on defense. Um, the young guys, Vanderbilt, Jalen Noel, um, Leandro Balmaro coming over. Uh, we have Pat Bev and Torian Prince can help mentor those guys. Um, we want to look to develop as much as possible. Chris Finch going into the offseason said that we're focusing on basketball 101 again. Um, we're looking, I'm at least I'm hoping just for a developmental season that uh, ends up being more than development. We want to be in competitive games every night. We want shit to mean something this year. <laughs> okay. Okay. I like that. So, so, so your, your two words, Wes, are wash for this, for this last year and hopeful and development for this, for this upcoming year. Yep. Yep. I'll okay, go with that. okay. I like that. I like that. I like that very much, man. Okay. So, so now, uh, Wes, we, we are now entering here our closing segment here. We do on clutch talk. We do a little game here. We like, uh, as a closing segment called guess the player. So, uh, Wes, sure. let me, let me introduce you to the rules. The way, the way it works is I have five players here listed. I I'm going to list off their accolades, uh, some things that they've, that they've done in the NBA, something that they're, that they're even famously known for. And you junior and Jay Hill would now, uh, you have to guess you guys have two guesses though okay you c- feel free to blurt them out like I, I as i give away my hints you can blurt them out as right away if you know it but you only have two so use them wisely all right all right let's do this you guys ready to get into this guest the player let's do this sir sir all right our first player if we, we go got... too far back i'm screwed <laughs> <laughs> all right our first player we got he is a one-time 50, 40, 90 club. He's a three-time gold medalist. He's a one-time rookie of the year. He's a one-time NBA champion. Is it Kevin Garnett? No. Okay. He's a one-time all-star game MVP. He's a seven-time All-Star. Ray Allen. No. He has a signature shoe with Nike. Shoe game is not my thing. <laughs> oh, okay. shit. You are ready for this next one? He's known in the league for having very crafty handles. Kyrie Irving? Yes. <laughs> Junior got that one. Junior got that one. I'm not gonna lie. Oh it came through my mic. Junior's was the first one that came through my mic. <laughs> okay, That's an okay. Ethernet cable connection. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. Next player here we got. He is a one-time champion. He's a 15-time All-Star. He's a one-time All-Star Game MVP. He's also a one-time NBA MVP. Hey, Kevin Garnett. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I had to prepare from last time. I was like, I was like, this one's Kevin Garnett. I'm sure it has to be. Dang. It has to be. Okay. I, I, I had to throw I had to throw in a Wolves player for for, for the yeah. Wolves episode, Wes. <laughs> Bro, I lagged out for a little bit there. I completely missed the end. Who was it? <laughs> oh, it, it, did it did it cut off at the end? Yeah. Oh, redo oh, it then. Okay. Nah, I'll, I'll, come on. No, what yeah, you yeah. mean, redo it? Oh, my man, was always trying to take this off of me. Nah, you didn't hear it. Wes didn't hear it. How's he supposed to guess it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, good, it's good. It's good. Oh, man, this man always trying to take points. He cut off out. Me, it cut out. How can you hear who it was? He might have do it. I'll do it again. We got to got to run it back. got to do it again. All right. All right. You ready? All right. The second player here. Are we doing the same player or what's going 
<laughs> All right, I'm going to do a different player. Different player here. All right. Our second player. He's not American. Giannis. No. He's <laughs> a two-time All-NBA defense first team. Here you go, Bear. No, he's probably made it more than that. He's a three-time All-Star. He's a one-time NBA steals leader. Okay, y'all better be ready for this next one. I think one. I know, but I only got one guest left. Okay, he is a one-time Rookie of the Year. Ben Simmons? Simmons? Yes, Jay Hill got that. I heard that one what? on Jay Hill. I heard we do, that one redo that because my shit froze. <laughs> Junior is one. <laughs> I, know, I got two. What you mean you want one? No. Wait, what was your first what was your second one? Uh, Kevin Garnett. No, we didn't count. Ca- what? What's in it? We ca- we discredited that, right? I we discredited that. Out. We we it, it is what it yeah. is. Keep it pushing. Let's let's keep it pushing. Let's keep Man, this pushing. Give me that VAR. That's- give me that VAR. That's two one, right? <laughs> what happened? Oh, Wes, we lost Wes. W- Wes, can oh, you can you still right. hear us? Is the connection? My lag going crazy. It's okay. We, we we just got two more players, and then and then and then we almost done here. Okay, here uh, we go. Hold on. Can I get like thirty seconds? Yeah. Yeah. One second. Show. All right. Next player we got here, guys. So unfortunately, his career was cut short due to injuries. Gilbert Arenas. <laughs> no. That's a very good guess. Brandon Roy. No. I got one, but I'm saving mine. He is a two-time champion. And that's not who I had in mind. He has his jersey retired. He's played for two teams. You said he was a two-time champion? Yeah, he's a two-time champion. No, but his jersey's not retired. Okay. His jersey's not retired or is retired? No, it his is jersey, retired. But the guy I got is, in mind isn't. Is retired. Okay. He's an 11-time All-Star. He was most famously known for making his name in the NBA over there in the six. Over there in Miss Toronto. Carter. No. Oh, no. What? <laughs> That's two guesses. Okay. 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 But, but 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 I got a player, but he's he matches all the criteria, but he's not a two time champion. Who who's do you say? I mean, player? I'm not gonna waste my guess. He's not a two time. <laughs> okay. Champion. He okay. I I I I'm out of hints, but I can give some more hints. His career was cut short. He doesn't have too many accolades. Okay. He was part of a monumental team that just changed the NBA landscape for the rest of the. NBA's life. He was part of a team that made the NBA went from you can win with well, maybe one or two stars to you need at least three to now you have to win. Oh, no oh Chris Bosch. Yes. Oh, oh, no. man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, so the player I had in mind, the player I had in mind I was Tracy McGrady. For a second. Yeah. I the player I had in mind was Tracy first, McGrady. I had and, and, Chris Bosch before Junior. Wow. Dude, dude. Wow. You shouldn't have wasted your guesses. Wow. His name in Toronto. Um, man, I was going to say Tracy McGrady lines up with thought. almost all of those. What, but what, he, what, 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 what was that, Wes? I'm a lot worse at this than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, Wes, hey, don't even worry difficult. about it. Th- these Good, are Wes. so hard. These are difficult, Wes. <laughs> all right, guys. All right. Let's, so let's get into this last player we got here, guys. All right. This guy is a 10-time NBA All-Star. He's a one-time All-Star Game MVP. He's a nine-time NBA Assist Leader. He's a two-time All-NBA First Team. Okay. His jersey is retired. He's a two-time NBA steals leader. Jason Kidd. No. Steve Nash's jersey. No. 
Okay. I his, thought about both their players too. It's funny. <laughs> his right. game, his game became very popularly known because he played with another player. John Stockton. John Stockton. Yes, Jay Hill got it. I can't do my <laughs> thing first. Here? It came to my <laughs> thing. I can only hey, do it. Cool. I got three though. I got oh, three. So yeah. why don't you give me that? You and you got it. <laughs> oh, I got man. the Chris Bosh one, man. Oh, but you oh man! Okay, all right. <laughs> this guest the player this week was a little hostile, man. <laughs> this guest the player was a little no, hostile no, this it's week. All, it's, it's all love. It's all love. It's all Jay love, baby. Man. <laughs> okay. Uh, th- th- okay. Well, this is th- this is a perfect place for us. You know, go ahead start to wrap it up here, Wes. We want to thank you very much, Wes. You know, for for coming on here and uh, and sharing us. You know, with your your time, sharing us your time, sharing us your Timberwolves yeah, uh, knowledge. You got you got a whole lot of knowledge, man, and and we really appreciate uh, you coming on here and talking some wolves with us, man. So, you got any last words you want to say to the fans here, Wes? Don't sleep on us this year. That's it. Keep your eye on us. Okay. Yes, okay. I like that. Don't, don't sleep on the wolves, man. Oh, I like that. So, hey. And keep an eye on your favorite center because Ant come with a dunk on that head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There you go. Play. Don't don't get caught on the help defense, man. Don't get caught walling off because Ant <laughs> will put it on you. <laughs> all right, man. So, hey, Jenner, uh, what you got any last words you want to say here to Wes and uh, all the Wolves fans in Minnesota? All right. Just appreciate you coming on. It was a lot of fun. Enjoy talking about the Wolves. Enjoy talking about this upcoming season. You're going to be a polarizing team, man. Like I said, what we were seeing, what we saw with the Suns a couple years ago and what we see now is I feel like the, 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 the Timberwolves can be on the same trajectory, you know? So so it's going to be it's just going to be interesting to keep watching them grow. Definitely, man. Sure. Jay Hill, what, what about you, man? You got any words for the, for the Wolves fans? Yeah, no. Nah, Wes, appreciate you coming on and sharing your knowledge and – uh, I root for all the small market teams, man. So I, I hope the the Wolves can make some noise because, yeah, I, I think we, we saw this year that the small market teams can do it. So let's see what they got. Yes, sir, man. So as always, you guys, for all, all everybody that's listening, whether you're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, man, make sure you know you 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 rank you rank the podcast. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you leave a like. Make sure you leave a comment down below and talk. To, let us know what your Wolves opinion is, man. So. We just really appreciate everyone's time, man, and that's it. So if 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 there's no further uh, further talks about the wolves, man, that's it. We could wrap this up, man. So we out of here, y'all. Clutch talk out. Peace. Peace.